out of a full throttle. Okay, cool. <laughs> That's pretty cool. In terms of power, what do you see? How much power is this? You see like a little screen up here. Really? Um, so this is our non-performance version um, of our larger battery. So it has about 362 horsepower, uh, 325 foot-pounds of torque, more or less. Okay. Um, and so you have, um, and then our performance version is about 416 horsepower, 443 foot-pounds of torque. Can you, can you take a look down at the dash with the glass on? Mm -hmm. So can you just walk us through what you can see on the front there? Yeah, absolutely. So all of the, the two kind of screens that you see here on the sides are fully customizable. If you push and hold either one of these scroll wheels, you can actually change that around. Yeah, so wow. if I want to see the media, I can choose that and change that around. And then here, um, right here in the middle, actually, it'll have your speedometer. It'll show you on your left-hand side is going to be the speed. And then on the right-hand side is going to be your uh, energy in kilowatts. So when it goes up into the orange, it's actually showing you the amount of energy you're expending. And then when it dips down to the green, it's the amount of energy that's being um, put back onto the batteries during the brake regeneration. Yep, and then the number right in the middle, the 157 that I'm showing there, is yes. the rated range. The rated so that's how many, how much, basically how many miles we have left until we have to charge again. And okay. obviously, we all get one of these when we pull back over. So we all get to take one of these Model S's home. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> so I've got that on video now. So thank you. <laughs> but the performance version. Yes, the performance version in black and white. <laughs> All right, I'll give it a little bit of a punch here as we enter the freeway. Oh, <laughs> Yeah. I've been following the Model S for so long. It's such a beautiful car. Do you know when these are coming to the United Kingdom? Um, I believe we actually have already started sales to the UK. Okay. Um, we've been starting to make our beginning deliveries. I think we're doing this spring. Um, we've already optimized the right-hand drive car and everything like that. Yep. Um, it's just at this point, I think it's just a matter of time until we have them out there. Okay. And pricing on this and the performance model? Um, so our larger battery, this one here, starts around 80000 in U.S. dollars. Yep. Um, and then our larger, our, our uh, performance version starts around 93500 um, And we also do offer a smaller battery. Um, it's where this, these both, uh, this one and the performance, both are uh, 85 kilowatt hour batteries. Um, we offer a smaller uh, 60 kilowatt hour battery. It has a range of about 208 miles on a full charge. Um, so you have the option. Those loans start around seventy thousand dollars. So you kind of get to choose. You can do battery size. If you want smaller, or larger battery, then you can choose if you want the non-performance or the performance version. And the only difference between performance and non-performance is the tuning of the motor. Um, so it just puts out more power, essentially. Okay. I'm pretty sure what it's like in the front, but there is quite a lot of road noise in the sort of rear quarter. Yeah, I mean, the only reason for that is typically in a gas-powered car, um, it's masked by the engine. Okay, um, yeah, no. You know, just because it is an electric vehicle, it's very quiet. Yeah, you haven't got the roar of the engine. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So you, you have one of these personally? I do not have one of these personally. If I could afford one, I would definitely have one. Um, but at the moment, I just enjoy getting to drive them pretty much every That's other right. day at work. So <laughs> no complaints from my end here. What's your uh, actual job role at Tesla? Um, so I work um, in sales currently. Okay. Um, also do a lot of marketing events like these where we'll work with uh, larger companies. We'll set up test drive events, things like that. Um, so we've done similar events with, um, of course, we'll do some within, we've done some in the past with NVIDIA as well. Um, we'll do them with Facebook, Apple, Google, um, pretty much anyone who kind of shows interest that they want to do that. We can definitely set them up. Um, and basically come to the offices, bring, you know, up to five, six, seven cars. We've done so in the past and given everyone test drives. We did it with uh, EA Studios a couple of months back. Um, a lot of different companies that have either reached out to us or we've reached out to them um, in terms of setting up some type of, um, um, you know, net networking, marketing event. And the car didn't crash when EA got near it? Nope, no. nope. <laughs> Everything, everything's been good so far. Can you maybe... Like, so obviously you're wearing Google Glass right now, uh -huh. and you're driving a Tesla Model S car. I am wearing Google, yeah. Maybe touch the touch screen and see that using Google Glass while you're driving isn't as intrusive. As it is definitely not. It is very easy to do so. I mean, pretty much choosing from navigation to the energy usage here, wow. very easy to do so. You know, have the rear-facing camera show up here. This little arrow right here will actually flip around the screens. 
So yeah. you can kind of switch around the two there. Um, you know, dragging and dropping different things here. You can kind of choose which side you want to do it on. Um, a lot of different little cool tricks there. Have the full, uh, all the climate controls down here. And then I can turn up the volume for the music. Right now it's paused. Has our upgraded sound system in here too. Um, so that's awesome sound system done in-house with the Dolby Digital Surround Sound Package. Um, so a lot of cool features, especially with the upgraded sound system. Uh, am I right in thinking that's a 15-inch screen? 17-inch uh, touchscreen display, yep. It's weird seeing, obviously, a screen there. I'm trying to gauge the size because it's surrounded by the rest of the dash. All right. So, we were initially it was like 13, 14, yeah. and then... So, on the dash, like, you've got, obviously got leather. There's nothing, no trips up there. Yep. Just a standard leather yeah. dash. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank, Thank you very much. Absolutely. You just push the silver button in right here, puts the car in park. When I were to, if I were to get up and out of the car, it'll sense my weight has left the seat and the car will turn off on its own. Can you get keep boss on while you do that? Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. So as of now, so we can get up and get out of the car here. And then by looking back in, the car is now off. That's incredible. Uh, maybe you can the handlebar. Oh, uh, the handles too, yeah. So in terms of under the hood, what have we sort of got? Um, it's just going to be additional storage space. So yeah, once these are all closed, if the doors were to be locked, those handles will just go back in right by themselves. Is it possible to see under the hood in the mm -hmm. back? Absolutely. Thank you the much. American word. Yeah. We call it a bonnet. Can I see your keys? Yeah, absolutely. So this is basically what we call our frunk, is a front trunk. So this, is, this is the key itself. Kind of looks like a small version of the car, yeah. So there's just going to be additional storage space here. You're welcome. Yeah, no problem, guys. So yeah, all this is just additional storage space. The batteries of the car themselves, they along the entire floor of the car. Um, the motor is just a direct drive sitting right on the rear axle of the car, um, about the size of a watermelon, not too big. Um, and that's pretty much it. We have kind of the motor, the single speed gearbox and that drive inverter on the other side of it. And that kind of sits right there on the rear axle. Um, really not in being able to see from the outside. So if we go back to the trunk, you won't really be able to see it, but I can kind of show you generally where it yeah, would be sure. kind of underneath. In terms of um, sort of servicing, how does this sort of compare against that? Uh, yeah, I mean, they're about 80% less moving parts on this car versus a sarin gasoline powered car. So all the maintenance that's actually on this car is very minimal. Anything from, you know, uh, little software fixes to uh, replacing washer fluid. Um, obviously you get your normal wear and tear in terms of the brakes. Tires. Exactly, yep, yeah, brakes, tires, yeah, tires themselves replacing tires is not covered under um, any type of maintenance or anything like that um, so you just have to pay for that separately but you know rotation of tires tire pressure uh, sensors things like that brake pads those are all something that's included so with what that. What can we expect from maybe you might not be able to talk about it maybe from like the next gen Oh, the next model? So we have a Model X, it's a crossover SUV. We start production of that at the end of this year. Um, and basically that's gonna be an all-wheel drive SUV, uh, fit up to seven full-size adults in it. Um, it's gonna be big, especially here on the West Coast and East Coast in terms of, you know, winter driving conditions. Our cars perform, you know, the Model S here, for example, performs extremely well in winter conditions. Um, but of course it's only rear-wheel drive since it only has that motor on the rear axle. Um, so, you know, if you were to go up and go to, um, you know, anywhere you wanna go skiing, you know, any type Department of Transportation is going to make you put change on the car, um, which will be nice once we do have Model X because you won't have to worry about that. And then about two, two and a half to three years down the road, um, we plan on having what we call our third gen. It's going to be kind of our more uh, mass market vehicle. Um, so starting price point around thirty to forty thousand dollars is kind of what we're generally kind of ex that's, expecting. That's when it'll be really exciting. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be huge when that comes out because that's going to basically allow you know the average person to be able to purchase a Model S. You know, they don't have to spend almost $100,000. They can do it for like around $50,000 with a lot of options. Um, drive train, is it rear-wheel drive? Rear-wheel drive, yep. So right on, right about here, yep. so right under here, so right under where my left hand is yep. here would be where the uh, three-phase four-pole AC induction motor would be. Okay. Uh, right here in the middle would be the single-speed gearbox. And on the right side would be the drive inverter that converts AC to DC and DC to AC. Yep, and then this down here is just gonna be additional storage space here. Yep. There's a lot of space compared to a normal car. When, yes. I, when I stepped inside, I would not have thought that the trunk and the bonnet would have that much space because this is really just a just a battery underneath. Yeah. And you mm -hmm. guys have got a fitness in the driver's seat. No, feel free okay. to.
And yeah, you guys absolutely. have actually got really, really good safety records with this. Like, absolutely. One of my safest cars in the world to drive. Yep. If you give a little pressure on the door handle, it'll pop right open for you. Yeah. yeah. So five star crash test safety rating in all categories. Um, you know, a big reason for one of that, at least in one sense, is because we don't have a gasoline engine. We don't have the flammable liquids running throughout the car. Um, so basically, you can kind of cross through some of those uh, categories in terms of safety. Um, our entire front trunk up there is basically a giant crumple zone. Um, so you know, if any type of front end collision were to happen, it's extremely safe. Um, and safer because I've got I've got two kids at home. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so your yeah, side uh, side crash absolutely is incredibly mm -hmm. uh, safe if you've obviously got two child uh, uh, Mm -hmm. in the, in the back, exactly. Absolutely, yeah. Really and so a cool option that we have that unfortunately neither of the cars that are here today have, um, we have rear-facing seats that are actually meant for kids. Okay. Um, so they basically kind of snap into the back of the rear seats there and they face out the back of the car. And so you could pull this piece out here and that would be where their legs would go. Um, and so that would allow for two kids, usually between the ages of about four and eight years old, height limit about four foot nine, four foot ten. Yep. Um, so meant for kids. Um, so you can actually fit up to seven people in the car. So all five of us that were just in the car could be in there and with two kids in the Back, and there could be seven of us total. Even with the three adults, like I'm a big guy, uh -huh. two decent sized guys, there's a lot of room. Yeah, is, yeah. Again, very, really surprised. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, thank you. No problem at all. I just put some on there, just on the buttons. On the, oh, here yep. we go.